Hey Dylan, I am Joe from Spartan Race and um, here at the Explorers Club looking to sign up for an expedition. What's available? I see you had the North Pole 1909, South Pole, that's done, Everest 53, deepest part in the ocean 60, surface of the moon. Is there anything left that I could do, I could sign up for? Well, you can apply for a first to the surface of Mars. We're taking applications for that. Am I going? We're on an <laughs> no, expedition. No. Hey, 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 hey. Where are we? Oh, Johnny, it's my where turn. are we going? It's okay. my turn. Hey, welcome to Spartan Podcast. Let me start that one again. So a while back, we interviewed Levison Wood, uh, and I guess it's Dell interviewed Levison Wood, and I said at the time, you will not meet a cooler, more interesting, dynamic person than that. I think we can throw that out the window. I think we have here. On the side of the ocean. Oh, my God. This guy, mm. uh, executive director of the Explorers Club. Will Roseman. 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 Okay. Um, I'm not going to tell you anything because he'll tell it far better than I ever could, but you're going to hear stories about choking a leopard to death with his bare fist. Um, and another story that, honest to God, I don't even know if we're going to have to edit out. It's so shocking, but um, it really is that good. Uh, you just got to see this. This guy's unbelievable. We are here for the Spartan Up podcast. I don't even know what episode number this is. At the Explorers Club, New York City with Will Roseman. The executive director. How long have you been? Well, I'm 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 the executive director, and I'm also a member. So You're a member. I, I spend time in Zaire, now Congo, living with the Baluba. Who are a, they? A, a tribe in a Bantu tribe in the uh, Shaba region of Zaire. How'd that go? It was beyond interesting. In fact, you know, in retrospect, it was probably some of the most exciting points in my life. How long did you stay? Uh, on and off for over a year. Or more. And what, what, when, more. when was that? What year? That was in the early 1980s. In the 80s. Yeah. So you just picked up. How'd that happen? National well, Geographic? You were flipping No, through. I had a, uh, a brokerage firm that I was involved with and fortunately sold and decided to spend time in, in the Congo. Huh. And so give us, uh, you know, this, this podcast is about meeting entrepreneurs and meeting people at all walks of life that um, get it done. Mm -hmm. You got it done. Right. How, what are the tips? What are the things we learn? Maybe you learn something in the Congo that can apply to the people out there that are looking to get motivated, get ahead, get started. You know, it's it's you know, I'm sure you've heard that old adage uh, well, where I guess it's credited to Winston Churchill when he gets up to speak about accomplishment and he says three words uh, or three stand uh, lines. He says, uh, "Never give up, never give up, never give up." And I think. That, without question, is the key. And I've seen it with every member of our organization. I mean, you don't become a member of the Explorers Club unless you've done something... Extraordinary. Extraordinary. And it's all about not giving up persistence. Absolutely. At least that's my, per that's my perspective. So, so uh, here's a big question for you. Is, um, that can also lead you down the wrong road. In other words, you're uh, 200 meters from uh, summoning Everest, bad storm rolls in, if you apply that adage, never give up, it could be uh, quite detrimental. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think you also have to be knowledgeable. I mean, I, you know, certainly someone venturing on an expedition, if they're not prepared uh, and they haven't done their homework, that would be a significant mistake. Sure. So you've got to know um, when to turn around, when to give up. That's... But Winston Churchill didn't mention that part. No, he didn't. But you know what? I guess he, he had the knowledge and the wherewithal. Sure. Uh, and I guess uh, in many ways that's probably a key is, is being prepared. And being prepared means doing your homework. Knowing, uh, knowing when far enough is enough. That's absolutely right. And so um, we're here in the Explorers Club, and there's some amazing things on the wall for those listening and not watching. Um, there's a man on the moon behind me. Can you point out some of these things? Sure. And, and I mean, the flag that you see there is an Explorers Club flag that uh, accompanied the Apollo 15 mission and was on the moon. Wow. We also have the Apollo 11 moon flag here. Um, there are planes. This is a piece of the Douglas World Cruiser, first plane to fly around the world. This is a good example. This is Amelia Earhart's Lockheed Vega. It's an actual piece of her plane. Wow. Of course, not the plane she went missing in, but her, her transatlantic flight 1932. 
there's uh, cosmonaut gloves that you see over in the corner there. Uh, various flags by, uh, signed by members and otherwise that have done extraordinary things. Those are not historic flags that go on expedition. These are flags uh, that individuals have taken. Uh, uh, these are flags that when members come, I have them just signed. Sign. They're more right. table flags. But if you, if you need me to sign one and put it next to Elon Musk, I'm happy to do we're that. We're happy to do that. <laughs> Jeff Bezos is there, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, uh, Leroy Chow, even Stephen Hawking. Wow. His thumbprint is there. And, and so those flags that you're pointing out, they are required to be carried, as I understand it, if you're going to go on a mission or an ex exploration. Well, members go on approximately 600 to 1,000 missions per year, but only 50 or 60 qual qualify to carry a flag. Okay. And that flag is brought on the expedition and hopefully brought back. Got it. And, and what would you say the percentage of the flags you give out, the 50 or 60 a year, since the early 1900s, mm -hmm. how many do come back? Like, like, like how many I'd are I'd say fatal? 95%. Okay. So only... I mean, some, you know, tragically we lose people in the field. Yep. Uh, and, or, and likewise, flags have been lost. But flags, Explorers Club flags, were first to the moon on the Apollo 11 mission. Our members were first to the North Pole, first to the South Pole, first to the summit of Everest. In fact, Sir Edmund Hillary was our pres honorary president up until his death. First uh, to the Marianas Trench, the deepest point in the ocean, and, and first to the moon. Almost all the moonwalkers are members of the Explorers Club. Would something like uh, trying to break the two-hour marathon qualify, or what, what are the qualifications? Well, typically it, has a it should have a scientific bent to it. Um, uh, adventure, uh, uh, exploration without science is adventure, and we're more on the on the science end than we are the adventure end. And so you want to learn something. Uh, yeah, right. it, it's important that you learn something. Who founded it? Well, it was founded by uh, Perry, Amundsen, uh, Cook, some of the great Arctic explorers. Is that a is that a signal? No, that's a clock. <laughs> that's a clock. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if somebody just landed on a planet or something. No. What do you think they learn? I asked Buzz Aldrin that question, and uh, he said to me that it's, it's really testing man's abilities and pushing yourself so that uh, you can explore and, and, and enlighten humankind. And in many ways, that's what it is. Even if you do it personally, more on a personal basis, I mean, what, what helps you individually in some ways contributes to helping mankind as well. I remember uh, somebody had said to me, um, you know that extreme art that's just, um, I can't think of the genre of just abstract, crazy art. Mm -hmm. And they said, no, actually that art is really important because it pushes the limits. It's pushing the envelope. And, and, then, and then other art kind of moves just 1% that way. And mm -hmm. so I guess that's what you're saying, right? In many ways, I, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, Chuck Yeager uh, has said that as well. I mean, it's all about pushing the envelope. How far can we go? Like, what, what's missing? Do you have a list of things that need to still be conquered? Well, downstairs is a plaque that lists all our members' famous firsts, and there's an empty space there, and that's for the first member that walks on Mars. You think that's coming? Absolutely. In our lifetime? Yeah, I do. That would be amazing. Yeah. So um, let's walk around, if you're okay with Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And let's uh, point out some great things, and maybe, maybe some of our uh, listeners and viewers can learn something. Absolutely. All right. So we have over 200 flags. A little more than 30 have been retired. And those are flags of individuals that have done extraordinary things. This flag it was a flag taken by Roy Chapman Andrews, not very well known today, but really famous in his day. What happened was he was the first individual that found the, a dinosaur egg, which proved that dinosaurs were reptilian in nature. Wow. But in popular culture, he's the individual that they modeled Indiana Jones after, the famous movies. And it was in 1925 yeah. in the Gobi Desert? That's right, yeah. How did he find it? Well, I mean, he went on expedition, and he also brought over 100 Dodge Brothers vehicles, which was uh, put Dodge on the map as well. Um, during that expedition? During that expedition, yeah. Wow. I hope you're not sitting still while you listen. If you are, you better get a burpee break in. Uh, this flag is interesting because, as you probably know, the Marianas Trench is the lowest point on Earth. It's the deepest point in the ocean. 
And many of these flags have been on 20, 30 expeditions. And our member who took this flag down to the Marianas Trench chose it because this flag has twice been to the summit of Everest. So it's the only item in the world that's been to the highest points on Earth and, and the, the lowest, lowest points, points on Earth. Earth. And it was really an extraordinary uh, expedition. And he, uh, he's probably best known, he's also film director, James Cameron. He's probably best known for having done Avatar and Titanic and, and that, movies such as that. That's Terminator. amazing. That's amazing. And he's a member. Yes. So you said these flags go on many expeditions. Um, how does that happen? Wouldn't it, when they bring it back, then you sign it out again? To yeah, people, people choose. I, I, I think Jim chose this flag intentionally so that, uh, as would, I said, it would be that only, the, yeah. just that it's you know, the only item that's been to the highest points and the lowest points. And the lowest points. Yeah. It's a great room. Yeah. The sled that you see above is this actual sled that Perry and Hansen took on their 1909 expedition when they were first to the North Pole. Well, next time you're complaining about carrying your yeah, luggage, right? This is an interesting flag, and you know, it says a lot. I mean, we talked a little bit earlier about, um, about knowing when to say when, and this is the flag taken um, by the Apollo 13 mission. And that's, if you're familiar with the movie with Tom Hanks, Apollo 13, yep. they had intended to land on the moon just like this flag did, and of course fly this flag on the moon, but things went terribly awry. What do you think got them through it? It was really... A, a lot of stamina, a lot of good, a lot of uh, hard work and, and, and willpower that uh, enable them to survive. A lot of practice and a lot, a lot of preparedness. I think that was extraordinarily important. I don't think they could have, have done it otherwise. But of course, that that is a national uh, project. It's a national project, yeah. and um, and they made it. They absolutely made and it. And they made it because of Churchill's quote: "Never I, give up." You know, that's very true. Right. I, I think so. All right, let's go see some more. Uh, this painting is of our first president, Adolphus Greeley, in his ill-fated Camp Clay expedition. But like Shackleton, who is also a member of the club here, it's really a, uh, a lesson in leadership and leadership abilities. But 25 men went on expedition, only six returned. Wow. Uh, they believe a good portion of them may have been, even been cannibalized. Wow. I, they didn't kill anyone, but I think they ate them after they died. Uh, but those uh, that survived just barely survived. Yeah. If there are potential entrepreneurs or anybody looking to get motivated watching or listening to this, what the takeaway really is, is um, as you said, perseverance is the only thing that's going to get you through. And it's also a matter of assessing risk. That's extraordinarily important too, I think. Yeah. All right, let's go see some other stuff. I'll walk up. I'll walk up. Oh, yeah, do you want to? Yeah. I just, you were carrying that heavy thing. I didn't want to. It's five flights. Carl Akeley wrestled a leopard. He was one of our former presidents, Carl Akeley. Everyone knows that has lived in Africa, he'd rather be attacked by a lion than a leopard. A leopard is infinitely more dangerous. And he was attacked by a leopard, had nothing to defend himself but his bare hands. And he fought with this leopard, I think it was close to 18 minutes. And just to the point where he's about to succumb, he put his hands up to protect his face and the leopard going for his neck, as they typically do. He very thoughtfully took his hand, pushed it down the leopard's throat, and made a ballad or a fist, and that choked the leopard to death. Wow. And, you know, he survived many, many years thereafter, and that's a picture of him. He was former president here at the club. This was post-leopard wrestling. Yes, it is. You can he see the scars on his head. He doesn't look too happy. No. Uh, this is the table where Teddy Roosevelt planned the Panama Canal. Wow. Um, Admiral Byrd's radio on his second expedition to the Antarctic. Awesome. Some of the uh, books that uh, from, are from Napoleon's conquest of Egypt. The lion, the leopard, and the cheetah were killed by Teddy Roosevelt. Um, that was uh, that elk, not an elk, I think it's an, I'm sorry, that antelope was killed by uh, Charles Lindbergh. I, but I do want to emphasize that our members are overwhelmingly conservationists and sure. environmentalists. This just represents a different error. The tiger above uh, killed 49 people. Uh, we had received a letter from the King of Nepal asking the Explorers Club to send five individuals to kill a tiger that was terrorizing a village. And the club sent five people there. And it's really an amazing story when you hear about how it was done. And, and how, none of them how, were hunters. How'd they, how they find them? Well, what they did was they set a perimeter of five people around the village, and a tiger can only count to one. I know that sounds ridiculous, but 
So they climbed up to, into a tree, and they had other people go up in the tree and come down, because if the tiger was watching, as long as it saw someone come down, you could have five people in the tree. Right. And they waited that night for the tiger to come into the village to shoot. And a tiger can jump 15 feet straight up. Wow. And also 30 feet across. Okay. And um, uh, Mr. Mackinich, who was not a hunter but was a marksman, heard the tiger, uh, put on his flashlight to shoot the tiger, and then he realized the tiger was behind him. And like a lion, a tiger will only attack you from the rear and if you're running or moving. And he froze in that position for over five hours without even blinking for fear that the ti by the time he turned around to shoot the tiger and aim, the tiger would have been on him. So, so he just stood there? He just, he, yeah, for five hours. Wow. Didn't move. Wow. Amazing story. Yeah. How'd they ultimately get him? The next night, the tiger, uh, they staked goats in the area, and the tiger went to get the goat, and they... They got him. They got him. And they brought him back. Yeah, you know, it's a sad story, too, because, you know, tigers aren't naturally man-eaters, but when they looked at the tiger, they realized that what happened was, early in the tigress's life, it's a tigress, and she had two cubs, which were not killed, but um, she was training her... her cubs to be man-eaters, but early in the tigress's life, she had either been kicked by an antelope or in a fight with another tiger and her jaw was smashed. And she couldn't close her jaw all the way, so she had no choice but to eat humans because they were like the easiest prey. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. That's a, a, a famous member, Peter Freuchen. Really interesting story. He was on expedition and a horrible storm came uh, that was accompanied in part by somewhat of an avalanche and he threw himself under his sled to protect himself. And um, he uh, was buried under between four to six feet of snow and ice. And although this sounds untrue, it's absolutely, it's fascinating and, and documented. He had remembered that sled dog excrement when frozen, froze as hard as a rock. So he passed his own valves, fashioned his, fashioned his own excrement into a chisel and chiseled his way out. Wow. On expedition, he uh, uh, developed frostbite on his leg and was forced to chisel off his own leg. And wow. some say he had, to, um, uh, he had to eat part of it to survive. All right, so anybody out there with any business issue or family issue or whatever, I think this is a wake-up call that you can get through whatever you're dealing with, right? You really can. I think the, you know, the abilities of the human spirit are such that... To survive is, absolutely. is amazing. I think so. It just goes dormant, I think, in our current society, right? And everything's right at our fingertips. Well, I think likely so, but I also think that each one of us have this inherent ability to do what we need to do to, to survive. get through. Yeah. yeah. Let's find some of that. And yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. Uh, that's Roy Chapman Andrews' uh, whip, who, Indiana Jones, that's where the whip oh, came from. that's where the whip came yeah. from. So I think one of the coolest parts about that is when you're watching that guy, you're not sure if he's having you on or being dead serious. Well, like, that's so, the most uh, deadpan delivery I've ever seen. Funny, funniest video, hands down, you've ever shot. But um, <laughs> I, 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 not, but I, I think, but I think, <laughs> but I think he was being serious. Well, well, I, 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 I didn't know if he was serious or not because some of the stories are crazy. The, the building's awesome, yeah, right? Yeah, it's yeah. in New York City. Anybody who gets a chance has to go to the Explorers Club. Yeah. Um, and then just the history and the stuff going on there. We didn't, we didn't tap into you know more than sixty percent. There's still other floors and other things going on there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but those stories, like I think, I think those stories are all true. I think he's just the most interesting character. The way it's, it's, it's very, just all business. Oh, wild. Yeah. Right? And, and the fact that, like, I think about how I would be telling those stories, my hands would be moving me. You wouldn't have believed the most crazy thing ever. He does it every day. Yeah. It's like just right? normal business for him. That's where I say that I think uh, he's maybe even cooler than Levison Wood. That's pretty, pretty wild. What'd you think of the uh, leopard story? Wow. Yeah. Just, have you done anything like that, Carl? No, never. never. <laughs> and, I, and I hope to God never would have to. I mean, can you imagine being mauled by any kind of animal? I mean, I, I don't care if it's your little terrier. Sure. Yeah. And having enough sense to sit there and say, well, what I could do is I could make some kind of ramrod out of my fist <laughs> yeah. and just jam it down his throat and then hold it there long enough. To choke him out. While yeah. he's chewing on my arm, I guess. You know, I, I don't think he'd stop mauling them. And, and it'll choke him eventually. When I was 18, uh, I, sorry, when I was 18, I was often attacked by cougars, but I, I didn't ever do that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm going to say it. You know, I'm going to say it. 
he did. He, he did. He talked. To, he also told the story about the uh, the excrement and having to harden it and chisel it. And then, yeah, yeah. But we yeah. all we've all done that. Who hasn't done that? Who yeah. hasn't yeah. right. chiseled? That's, that's, a, normal, that's a normal winter day. Yeah. That's yeah. Like, yeah. You, you take a poop. You turn it into a chisel, and you. But, it's funny. I've read a lot of survival manuals. You know the SAS kind of things. I don't. I never did read one that said. What you should do is poop in your hand, Paleo let it freeze, lifting. and then carve your way yeah, out. Yeah, like flit mapping excrement. Something. Never heard yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah I, have a, I have a very good friend of mine now who's, if he's listening here, I won't give his name, but he's now a, an active duty two-star general. And years ago, they were up on, a, um, they were up on an exercise in, in Alaska. And so you've got to hike. You've got to bring out everything, including your own excrement. So you've got to bag it up. Well, they had bagged it up, but they were doing a survival thing, and they were also eating uh, rabbits and chicken and he got them. Rabbits he, are easy to skin. So they've got the like the pot belly stove and everything and he's in the little like little Quonset kind of like your little putty uh, tent outside and the guys come in and they're like sir what are you doing? I mean the place just reeked and he's in there and he what he his excrement was frozen and he reached Burn in it. the bag. Well no he thought it was the rabbit. <laughs> he's so doing it? He's cooking it and he's stewing it up and he's <laughs> he's in there he's in there getting ready to eat. <laughs> <laughs> sir this stew he just thought it was runny, this stew tastes runny like shit. rabbit. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, they call it black gold. They call it they call it humanure. You know, we have like a huge poo phobia well, now, but well, you know it I shouldn't call be it. going into our drinking water. It should be going into a compost pile. And they well, put it, it shouldn't be going chain. into your mouth. I can guarantee you that, right? Yeah, yeah not well, in your stew. Not directly. You can convince me a lot of things, but convincing me that it's okay to make stew out of poop is not going to happen. True. Fine. She's, she's probably compost got a word. Or, she's probably but, got a word or two know, for it. Humanure. As, as Johnny said, though, it must I, be it must be a cougar thing. <laughs> oh my God, no. Okay, I'm going to bring this back. Sorry, sorry, go, Colonel. I was just going to say this. And Johnny said it. This was one interview where it's the first time I've ever seen you not quite sure what to either ask next or what you had <laughs> just heard, whether it was real or not. Even right from the start where he said you could sign up for the Mars mission. I mean, you just kind of had a look on your face like, is that right? You know, you're reading all the impressive things they've done over history and you say... And you're, you're going to have some fun with them. Say, oh, is there anything I can sign up for? He said, well, you could go to Mars. You know, well, I thought for a minute. I mean, if I was going to go, I'm not a big space traveler to begin with, but if I was going to well, go. you don't go often, right? I don't go <laughs> often. <laughs> I, def I don't think I would do Mars. Just not exciting for me. Yeah, I mean, uh -huh. I think, I, think kind of cliche. <laughs> I think it was interesting what um, Mr. Roseman said, where he said, exploration without science is adventure. So, yeah, you yeah. know, like in terms of expeditions or exploration, in terms of uh, Spartan races, you know, you yeah. think about it. I mean, he's with the most phenomenal, mad explorers of the Shackletons of our day. I mean, the coolest people possible out in the, where I would love to be all the time, just out, out, out in the abyss. And it's like a really lovely, civilized place to celebrate that. And the funniest thing is when we were there with, with Jack and, and there was that stuffed polar bear there. And I said, and I was like, uh, hey, Jack, why, why isn't the polar bear moving? And he but goes, for those of you that don't know, Jack is my nine-year-old son. His nine-year-old yeah. son, who's very bright and awesome. And he looks and he goes, well, because he's civilized. Because <laughs> 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 there's the coolest stuff, but it does have that air of such like elegant celebration of the explorers. Cool, but I like that when he says uh, exploration without science is just it's adventure. adventure. Yeah. Yeah. Which you know, great. when we celebrate well, adventure, adventure is awesome. But he's saying let's elevate adventure and add some learning to it. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, just now you say anybody that goes there should take the time to to visit. Yeah, visit. Can anybody visit? No, uh, I think you can call in advance and make an appointment. And if uh, they let you come, they let you come. If they don't, they don't. But um, you know a member. We did. Yeah, you, if you knew a member, you know somebody. I guess worst case, email Sephra. At Sephra Podcast. Uh, dot, dot, never going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> dot, joke's not funny. Sephra at CougarLife.com. <laughs> She'll get you in. Yeah. <laughs> well, there we go. That's a perfect way no, to the Explorers Club, No, the Explorers Club, they do have a lot of events. I think they're only member-based, but like they'll have movie screenings and movie showings. And when people come back from their expeditions at McMurdo Station, whatever, they'll show their slides, they'll tell their story, they'll present their data. They also do something called Wings, which is a celebration of the women explorers. And on our podcast, we're going to be inviting a lot more females to come on. But there's, you know, really phenomenal women scientists explorers and there's this um whole big faction of the explorers club that really celebrates them so i invite you to go look up wings women they're amazing people for show notes video and audio from this episode please visit spartanuppodcast.com backslash 045 thank you for listening to another epic story of success get more at spartanuppodcast.com or follow us on twitter at spartanuppod the spartan up podcast is brought to you by spartan race to find a race near you, visit Spartan.com.